calling all green-fingered gurus and plant killers alike. We got you covered every month with gardening inspiration, hands-on practical advice and fun projects to do. From the latest in plant fashion, growing your own, whether to prune or not to prune, from cover to cover, the Gardener and Detainee magazines have got your back. Get your copy now or subscribe online at thegardener.co.za. Gardener Masterclass is proudly brought to you by Macro Home and Garden. Visit macro.co.za to find out more about our range to solve most common gardening problems. Macro.co.za And Stark Airs, the leading seed supplier in South Africa. Are you ready to grow? Stark Airs, seeds of success. Good morning everybody. It's spring, it's warm, it's gorgeous. A little, little bit of rain, some nice, beautiful mornings, gorgeous sunsets, like beautiful sunsets, guys. Um, and I can feel it in the air. In fact, the garden is telling us it's here, it's here. And we've all waited terribly long for this. Um, so I hope your gardens are ready. And I will tell you, true story. Everything that I'm going to show you today is out of our very garden. Pick this morning. Now, don't say, ah, oh, but Tanya. No, come on, guys. Come on, come on, come on. You can do it. You can do it. It's about a bit of planning and a bit of prep and a few little surprises that we've got for you. Today is all about what we can use in the garden for the vase. Now, now, hold on, hold on. We're not talking like stock stafe arrangements here, no? Nah? Because I'm very bad at that. Ask my managing editor. I'm really bad at that. I mean, I take flowers and like, Phew! and they've got to do their thing, you know? I'm not doing any Ikebana, no, how's your father, whatever the story is. I just want it to look beautiful. And time, time runs away with us. It goes, it's fast. Um... There are flowers that I'm going to show you that only flower for five days. So the conundrum is always, do I pick them, do I leave them in the garden? And I kind of like, well, there's an ongoing battle in this household. I'll, I'll tell you that right now. There's going to be a domestic, it's going to be about what gets cut. True story. So I'm like, oh, look how beautiful they're looking in the garden. Look at that. Next thing, whick, whick, whick. they're in a vase. I'm like, okay, but then I get over it. And I guess, yeah, that's the give and take. Um, but there has to be a balance between keeping it in the garden and bringing it inside. Because, yes, our lives are busy. Some of us leave home early in the morning and get home late at night. And we might just miss those few. Guys, it's from the garden to the vase. Few little interesting things along the way. And... Um, I truly hope you, that you're going to enjoy the journey with us this morning. Of course, we're going to do some troubleshooting, how to deal with some critters, how we're going to make things last longer, and of course, the surprise that awaits for summer. And what is it? Because all of this is now in flower, but a lot of it is going to carry on and carry on, plus there are a few other things. Um, okay, before I say hello, because I really don't want to forget, before I say hello to everybody that's online. Oh, and remember, please, if you are going to make a comment that needs to be on the Gardener Facebook page, okay? Please, the Gardener, not Tanya Fisser. That's the one that we're getting all the comments from today. Um, folks, okay, so I do sincerely hope that you have all bought your August issue. Mm. Well, if you didn't, the only way you can buy it now is to go to thegardener.co.za 
because there you can buy a digital copy. Why am I telling you this? Because you're saying, well, Tanya, August is like, meh, meh, meh. Well, guys, if you wanted to stand in line to win 75,000 rands worth of gardening goodies, me visit your garden, do a sketch, have a cup of tea, mm, maybe something a bit stronger, uh, and have a good care, as we call it, give you some advice, plus get plants from Melancians, gardening goodies from Stark Airs, you are going to have it coming out of your earballs, eyeballs of gardening things. And the way that it works is, of course, there's a competition. There's a funny word. There's a word that's out of place. In the August issue, in the September issue, which is this guy here with the beautiful foxgloves. And you've got to find it. You've got to find the word. And then you've got to get the October issue to find the last word because it makes a sentence. I know, I know. <laughs> it's so much fun. So, okay, so August, September, October. So if you don't have your August issue, either you've got to find it on to your granny, assistant, uncle, mother-in-law, who does have that issue, but just, just go to our website and get yourself the digital copy and trawl through and find that missing word. Guys, it's... It's a monster competition. It's big. It's big. Um, and it's all because we are saying thank you to plants. Um, I do hope that you've been enjoying all the videos that we've been releasing on, um, on Garden Tube and on the Thanks Plants platforms where we've been giving thanks to amazing plants. Containers, agapanthus, edibles, uh, plants for pets. We've got so much to be grateful for. The paper that we print on is from plants. The paracetamol. The honey that comes via the bees from the plants. Um, there's, there's so, so much that we can be grateful for. Physical things, but not only that, emotional things. The emotional aspect of gardening that it brings to all of us. That like, once you have pruned a large shrub, it's like, I did this, I got this. And there's that feeling when you walk inside after a day in the garden and you found a new muscle that you never knew existed, you know, or your hip all of a sudden needs a bit of a, a realignment. We, you know, there's, there's nothing in that sun-kissed feeling. There is nothing better than that. There can't be anything better than that. Why? Because it's been proven scientifically. Because when we do these activities, we release endorphins. Endorphins are released, which is the happy drug. The happy, happy drug. Morning, bee. I've got a bee coming to say good morning. That's my mom. She comes to say good morning to me every day in the form of a bee. It's proven. If you put your fingers into the soil, there is bacteria in the soil that has been proven to lift moods and melancholy. So, if you know of anybody who's needing a bit of a pick-me-upper, show them a big shrub and say, yeah, off you go, baby, off you go. Right, guys, let's see who's online this morning. Um, Renata, good morning. Uh, uh, well, August issue is as great as always, as well as the TV program. Oh, my gosh, yes, I nearly forgot. Listen, we're working on the November issue at the moment, so I'm like a bit like, yo, what happened? Um... The new season of The Gardener premiered this week on the Home Channel, on Channel 176. Um, we've got two amazing new presenters that are alongside me, Pindile, um, as well as Freddy Fresca. Uh, guys, it's a, it's a brand new season 21, can you believe it? <sighs> Time flies, eh? Time flies. I do hope that you're enjoying it. Please let us know. Uh, we'd love to hear from you guys. Um, Janine, good morning. Haven't been able to get into my garden for two weeks now, but what have you been doing? Hmm. Mm. Oh, I hope to get better soon. Okay, sorry. You've been sick. Okay, get better. Get better. Thought you were maybe doing bridge or something else. Okay, Pat, good morning um, from a sunny day in Cape Town. Uh, good morning. Wendy Waghorn from Edendale. Bernadette, good morning. Uh, well done. Good morning from Mossel Bay, the nursery, Mossel Bay. Well, good morning to you. Um, we're going to be going past that neck of the woods in end of October, I think it is. Yeah, I hope to pop in. Um, 
Helene, good morning. Janine uh, Tsusangi, good morning. From Kwekwe, Zimbabwe, good morning. Carl, um, good morning from Feltrift. Oh, I love Feltrift. Um, Sybil, good morning. Sandy, just planted some seeds. Good job. Keep them well watered. Keep them well watered. The days have been quite hot. Um, Renee Alcock, good morning from KZN South Coast. Um, who else have we got here? Uh, Tracy's just joined us from Queenstown. Um, Shanley, good morning. Good morning, Shanley Fisser. Um, uh, that's my, my cousin-in-law. We have got those things, I think. Yeah, a cousin-in-law. Yes. Good morning, sweetheart. Um, guys, you're there. Are so many of you. Tian, there you are. There you are. I was getting worried. I was getting worried, dude. Uh, Tian from Cape Town. Um, Valet, good morning from Belito. Guys, it's good to see you all here. It's good to see the names that I recognize. Right, so let's get straight into it. Um, there seems to be a bit of a... Oh, there's the conundrum that, that happens in our head. Um, and I think the conundrum happens when we're having to go... You know, you be, you've been invited to dinner. Okay. You've been invited to dinner or it's someone's birthday and you just don't know what to get them. You don't know. And is it going to be lint chocolates? Is it going to be um, something? I don't know. But what do you end up doing? You end up buying a bunch of flowers, don't you? Yeah, I've seen you. I've seen you all. And you pick it up and then the shock, the skok kicks in. When you look at the price, oh, oh, near. you need a Valium, you got to sit down. Because it's frightening. 200 bucks, 149, 169. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah. So, mm, so I'm going to give you an example. I'm going to give you an example. This most beautiful, most beautiful Pincushion, which is a leucospermum. That's its botanical name, leucospermum. It's called a pincushion. You will buy one of these at your local garden center between 150 and 200 rand. Okay, that's the price of the plant. You take the plant home, you plant it. Mm, you plant it correctly. Um, sun, well-drained slope, water it during the drier months before the rain comes because remember they're from the Western Cape so they get lots of rain in the winter and that's the time those first six months of planting these is when it all matters you can grow these anywhere you can grow these from the beach right up into the mountains incredibly frost hardy can cope with sea air as well and your 180 Rand investment is going to grow and grow and grow and probably be in your garden for about 15 years. Puh! This is one little part of it that we picked this morning. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine, 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 nine. And the bush is full. It's been in there for about three years. It is one and a half meters by meter, 0.2 wide. It is oozing with flowers. This guy is called high gold. Leucospermum high gold. You'll find them at your local garden centers. Guys, they last forever. They are absolute beauties. Um, and of course, in all different colors. And here is what I call smart gardening. Your investment is growing. What do you buy? What do you buy in today's world besides an MG that we all can't afford that only one person can sit in? Still don't understand those costs, but anyway. Well, what can we buy today that only improves in value? I'm thinking, besides a red wine. <laughs> There's not much. There, there really isn't much that we can, we can buy that improves and gives you more. Gives you more. And... Uh, and that is the point of today. Um, but before I start delving into this, which I'm, I'm already getting sucked into, I know there are going to be questions about lawn, guys. I know there are going to be questions because, yes, you all wanted to wake up immediately. Like you want to work outside and say, 
Spring is here. Why are you not green? Okay, so guys, very, very quickly, listen up and listen sharp. Um, if you haven't done anything to your lawn, you need to start watering, okay? If the rains haven't started like they haven't here, we are now watering a good watering once a week. But before that, we applied this, 232, okay? You can get it in many different brands at any different garden center. 232 applied because the 232 wakes up the roots, okay? Once you've woken up the roots, guys, then after that, you've got two options. I want you to then either use Turbo Grass, which is this guy over here, or Bioganic for Lawns. Uh, Mason's going to get in here so he can show that to you. Uh, Mason, come in here because I don't want to start moving all these things around. Okay, Turbo Grass, that'll be four weeks later after you've applied the 232. You can either use this or you're going to use some Bioganic for Lawns. Bioganic for Lawns, organic. Um, put it down. Both of these, I would recommend you water it in because this is a powder and when the dogs or you walk along and you haven't watered it in, well, you tend to then um, start carting it into the house on your shoes. So, um, that's what you want to do. Guys, if you have got patches, patches of lawn, which we all end up with. I mean, you must see my nightmare out there. And the dogs have been an absolute destruction. They've been digging up the lawn all over. I've got patches. So right now it looks a bit like a survival obstacle course, um, which the dogs seem to love trying to break through. There is no reward for them when they do get through the course, except maybe a very stern, stern warning from mom. Um, if you've got patches, guys, there are many different lawn seeds available. Please use them. Don't be frightened. Do not be frightened. It's very simple. It really, really is simple um, because all the instructions, believe it or not, are on the back, okay? They've even made it nice and simple for when you need to sew it. And please, when you open this, don't break the box, okay? Don't break the box because, because guys, I've broken the box before. So, so please don't break the box. I want to show you very, very quickly how it works. So you open the box like that, okay? Then there's this part over here. Open it up. Do note there's perforations, okay? You've got to lift these perforations up. Okay, so what I normally do is I put this in here because I always do mess it up. So perforations, get this guy over here. There he goes. Follow it along there, right? And then I cut it because I get a bit too excited and then I break things, okay? Cut it along there, get rid of that guy. Now you'll see there are all these little Look at that, see, these little holes. So, this is the fun part, okay, taking these out. So, do that, your seed is in here. Empty the seed into the box. Okay, empty the seed into the box. Then, 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 you put this part back here. Ha, ah, look at that. Ooh, because now, Look, when you're sewing, do you see? Ha. Ah. So it doesn't come out in a boom, boom. Oh. And then you're like, oh dear. And then you start scratching it and raking it and burying it deeper. And, and that's when disaster strikes. Okay, so guys, whether it's for sun, whether it's for shade, whether it's for a high traffic area, if you're looking for an indigenous lawn seed, you are going to find it, so please consider, and I would strongly recommend that you go with the lawn seed options, follow the instructions, it's really easy, and keep it well watered because germination rates differ depending on temperature and they also differ according to the type of lawn. Because some lawn, you might be watering and watering and say, this is not working. 21 days later, and you're like, okay, Okay, it works. All right, take that back. Okay, so just, just keep it well watered. That's all you got to do. Okay, across to here. Um, guys, that is, that. okay, that's lawns. That's lawns, finished, done. Now, whew, look at this. Look at the bounty. Look at the bounty. All from the garden this morning. So I'm going to go through them. And while I'm going through them, I also want you to start thinking about where I could plant this. How could I combine this in my garden and what would it look 
super, super great with. Okay, so I'm going to start. We've already spoken about the high gold, which is the leucospermum. Okay, here's another one. Look at this. And the interesting thing, every single one on this plant is a double. Every single flower. Look, every single one. It's a double. It's a double. <laughs> and the sunbirds love it and the bees go mad and each one is just so different. This is the beauty of these guys. Good plants are really no nonsense. Um, I mean, in terms of looking after them, you've just got to get that watering in the beginning, um, the first six months, and then you let them go. Then we don't even water ours in the garden. They only get watered from what comes out the sky. That's it. Okay, down to these guys over here. Now these, these are different, okay? Now, these are called leucodendrons, okay? Leucodendrons. So this is where the foliage, the foliage is the king. They have cones, okay? They have cones because these are monoecious, which means that the male and female flowers are on separate plants, okay? So very interesting. Um, and these, of course, are part of our floral kingdom, um, one of the great wonders of the world. And there are over 80 species of leucodendrons that are found naturally growing in South Africa. Most of them, of course, down in the Cape. A lot of hybridizing has taken place with these to give us sexy beauties like this. I mean, come on. Isn't that gorgeous? Now, they don't get a flower, okay? It's a cone, but the spectacle is in the foliage. And what we use in gardening terms, like this one over here, is where we have colorful bracts. So colorful bracts, a bract is a modified leaf, um, and that takes on color from May right through until the end of October. So that's your flowering time of these. That is when, and we call it flowering, but it's actually wrong because it simply is just the color. Likewise with the pincushions that I told you about earlier, flowering from May right through even until the end of November. And it's this part of the plant that gives it its ultimate beauty and so many different colors. And remember with foliage, the more you cut, well, you're pruning at the same time, yeah which means you're going to have a nice, compact, beautiful plant that's going to send up long, tall spikes like this, which you can cut for arrangements. <laughs> but, 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 okay. This is where it pops. Now, this is where I want you to start thinking. If you've got something yellow in the garden and your roses are obviously just starting to push through, you've got beautiful foliage coming through. So think about summer later on when you've got a bunch of beautiful yellow roses. You take some of this foliage of this beautiful black. Oh, oh, oh my goodness. Now that pops. That is wicked. It's modern. It speaks to you. You can't miss it. It's simply spectacular. And, and that's where foliage comes in. It's not necessarily all about the flower. It's about us being a bit creative. So think about in your garden, okay, you've got a yellow shrub, even if it happens to be a duranta. Sorry, see I'm getting twitchy, because there's so many other options than a duranta, as a belief. If you've got something yellow flowering in the garden, consider dark foliage next to it, because the dark foliage complements it and makes the other one pop. Okay, so we've got that part. I've now got two corners of your garden that I've sorted out. In front of it, what are we going to plant in front? Because we need something a bit lower. <sighs> look here, baby. Look at this. Look at this. And look when we combine them. Mace, get a shot of that, that, and that, please. I want you to, to imagine this in the garden. You've got a big pin cushion. You've got the black leucodendron next to it. Coming down into the foreground of your garden bed, you've got beautiful status. Status, also known as Limonium parisia is incredibly giving. It has to be one of the toughest shame. And you know, this one, they get no love in the garden. 
but they still carry on giving. I mean, and they're treated badly. They also don't get any water. Um, they're not part of the irrigation system. They're in that side of the garden. Honestly, they just go and go and go and go. And look at these beautiful long flowers. Uh, whether you right on the seaside, and I'm often asked, oh, what can I plant in the seaside that'll flower? This, this, okay? Because it can tolerate the sea air. Um, listen. Status. It's like paper, dries beautifully. Um, you can keep this for like 12, 13 years. Um, how do I know that? Because I've got a little piece of this that was from my mom's memorial that still sits in our kitchen in a little vase and it's still got the same colour. Huh, funny that, eh? Yeah, status. Beautiful, um, incredibly tolerant, drought tolerant. Pick it, use it, and combine it because look what happens when we put them all together. Yellow, blue, black, pop, baby, pop. Okay, I love it, I just love it. Now, another type of status that you can actually buy in seed packets, okay, and that's this guy over here. And we plant this, we sow it, um, and we just sow it like in situ. When I say in situ, we sow it directly into the garden, give it, a, give it some water, get it going. You can also buy these in little punnets from your local garden center, or you can buy them as instant plants. And this is called status quis, quis as in Q-U-I-S, status quis mix. And it is a mix. You get a lovely white, you get a beautiful pale pink, um, there's a yellow as well and I mean I walked past there this morning and just picked a few of these and look at those stems Also doesn't get water. It's in a part of the garden that only gets water from from the sky and this is status quis So a great filler we use it very very often um, in the garden um, Because it's tough as well. So so can you see where we're going? We're talking perennials shrubs and we're gonna get to the annuals now, okay, I need to go over this side. Right, next one, guys. Ooh, ooh, aren't you lovely? Aren't you just lovely? Okay, so these are Inca lilies. Um, folks, if you visited um, old gardens, and old gardens, I mean gardens that were established in the 70s, um, you'll probably see some of these, but here's the point. These, the ones that you see in those gardens, get very, very tall and then they fall over. Yeah, you've seen them. Yes. Okay, so with a bit of hybridizing, a bit of clever selection of plants, the growers and the plant breeders have come up with um, these guys. And these are part of what we call the summer series. So when you go to your local garden centre, ask for these. Okay, there's um, a beautiful cream, there's this red, and there's also a, a white white with a bit of a flick and then 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 there is oh this one this is indian summer uh and and i love the indian summer because it's bright it's bold folks it's got this lovely dark foliage and you see so nature has done this itself i just demonstrated to you yellow and black nature's done it all for us right here black leaves yellow flowers beautiful Inca lilies um, and this is gosh we only pulled out a few I mean they are in full flower at the moment look at these stems look at these stems thick gorgeous fantastic and they last in the vase for a very very long time um, gorgeous Inca lilies remember Inca lilies are a bulb and I'm going to show you that a little bit later um, and then our piece de resistance of spring has to be beautiful, beautiful delphiniums. I mean, this, is, this has been my pride and joy for the spring, guys. Um, delphiniums. Oh, look at that color. It's violet. It's like, it, it truly is violet. Um, we're picking these at the moment because as a delphinium, you pick it. And because it is a perennial, the new shoot will emerge from the base. 
So a new set of foliage, which will then set, send through more flower spikes. Isn't that colour insane? I just think it's the epitome. And guys, I, I have to brag about this because my delphiniums in the garden this year, it was a big experiment. Uh, we added loads of compost, we mulched, we fed, and we planted them very young. We planted them green. And the delphiniums in the garden are sitting shoulder height, shoulder height in the flower beds, like it has blown my socks off. Um, yeah, absolutely blown my socks off. Okay, I want to go this side because I want to talk to you very, very quickly about these guys. So, this is the Inca Lily. You saw the Indian Summer. Folks, please remember, these guys need very little attention. And I mean super little attention. Why? And I am going to do this to the plant because I need to show you why. So, stop all cringing. Um, look here. So... So, 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 if I get in here, look at these. Do you see? Do you see this? Do you see the roots? And deep inside here are going to be bulbs. There are bulbs right in here, but I don't want to maim this thing now. These thick, fleshy roots tell you a lot about the plant. They tell you that it's tough. They have the same roots, and they've also got a bulb inside. A little bulb, which means that that acts as a water storage organ, which means that you don't have to water it a lot. It's tough. It's tough as nails. Okay, lots of sun. Now, if you've got a smaller garden and you're saying, well, I don't really have space for that, but guys, you got space for that. Maximum height, kind of uh, probably 750, not even a meter. But the most important thing with an Inca lily is how you pick it. You never, ever go into an Inca lily ever and cut your flower like normal like with the pear secateurs you don't do that you never cut it what you do is you go to the plant and don't worry you're not going to hurt it and you're also not going to pull it out the ground because that's also what i'm told why don't i pull the whole plant out the ground you're not going to do that i promise you you're not going to do that so what i want you to do is you go to the flower that you're wanting the spike that you're wanting to remove you grab it low down, okay, and you just give it a tug. Do you see that? Just a tug. And what we've done is we've now snapped it off where the bulb was. We snapped it off where the bulb was. Ah, yeah, you guys are so smart. Because now where we've snapped it off where the bulb was, it's going to send off another shoot. So more foliage is going to push through because we've actually done a form of pruning. So when they're looking like this guy's over, uh, he should have been removed already. You don't prune it, you just grab it and there, give it a tug and out it comes. So that's how you pick inca lilies. Very, very important. And you know when they start going over and get a bit manky, I literally just go around the garden. We've got some of these dwarf varieties and this variety we've got growing all down the one side of the garden and it's called Intacana. Intacana nice and low you can see it this is its maximum height and um, put, pop them into the garden guys because these can get used small arrangements posies flower in the garden in the home what more can you want inca lilies high on my must-have list guys so so high and remember if the plant starts looking a bit lanky it starts looking like it's going over a bit all you got to do is just go up to the plant and pull all the leaves out. You just pull them all out till you've got bare soil. Give it a good handful of organic fertilizer, a good thick layer of mulch, and in two weeks' time, guess what's popping out there? The new little leaves. Okay. So, really, like, no nonsense. Come on now. <sighs> this is the guy. Okay. Right. Okay, back over here. Woohoo! Back here, back here, back here. Okay, guys, I'm going to race like a train. Arum lilies. I mean, Arum lilies, listen to me. Amaryllis. Now, I've got to talk to you about abuse. Okay, plant abuse. Now, the fact that these are actually still living and flowering is quite a miracle. And um, I'm going to tell you why. Uh, 
the culprit is standing right there, but we're not going to reveal anybody because these bulbs were planted in this bowl because it's coming bulb time now. Yes, yes, but we, it's bulb time, it's amarillo, it's time. They were put in this bowl, they were neglected, they were left, they were under a tree, shade. Oh, miserableis, miserableis. My goodness, we took this thing, put it into a bit of sun, fed it a bit, and look what's happening. It's flowering. No nonsense. Come on. There are very few plants that do this. Uh, this, is, this is beautiful. This is one of the sonatinas. They are the smaller flowering. It's not the big, big dinner plate type amaryllis, but I do really enjoy them. And remember with amaryllis, you can pop them into a glass vase with a bit of water. There's so many different colors. There is something for you. Um, what is that noise? That's an interesting noise. Okay, but never mind. Maybe it's my speaker. Have a look here. Beautiful, beautiful amaryllis. Ah, oh, hold on, Mason. Let me grab your phone there. There we go. There we go. Oh, talk about technical issues. I was just in Mason's pocket. Gosh, dude. Beautiful amaryllis, guys, whether it's red, whether it's pink, whether it's yellow. Um, uh, this is the sonatinas. Now, see there, sonatina? They are the smaller ones. This is called lemon sorbet. So sonatinas are your smaller flower, like I just showed you at the back there. Um, this one over here, um, in Tokanzi, this is one of the larger ones. Okay. But they're all available now at your local garden centre. So go out and get them. Look at the bulbs. Beautiful, strong. Plant them either in the garden, in pots. Um, and if you want to learn more about them, have a search on Garden Tube because we have got so many videos on how to look after them and how to care for them. So, so much available there. Okay, but I told you I wanted to just tease you about bulbs. Guys... This has to be the ultimate. <laughs> this has to be the ultimate spring. Spring flowering bulbs. These are beautiful irises. They're Dutch irises. We planted them in, in May this year. Remember your winter bulbs you've got to plant earlier. Okay, so they're winter bulbs, but they actually flower in spring, which is a bit weird. But these are Dutch irises. And um, these are the ones that we fight about. Yeah about are they coming in, are they out. Uh, these are just completely spectacular. And this is the epitome of what I talk about when I say plant and prepare, because then you will have this. Um, and this is a very nostalgic flower for me, because every birthday, every birthday, my mom would get delivered to me a bunch of Dutch irises, a whole bunch. So that's why we'll always have them in the garden. And whether they end up from the garden in the house, I really don't mind, as long as we've got them. And you know why there's this little yellow thing? That little yellow there is like a landing strip for the bees. It wasn't made there by anybody except by the big man upstairs. That's how it was designed, because it's like the runway lights. It's like when you're coming into land at night and the, the lights go on on the runway. This is to be able to show the bees and the pollinators, because it comes up ultraviolet. And when the bee's flying around, it gets this ultraviolet runway and it lands and it knows where to go to pollinate. But this mwah, is spectacular. Okay, so if you want to have beautiful bulbs, you've got to plant them now. Amaryllis. You've also got to plant your, where are they, where are they? Here. Gladiolas, guys. Gladiolas. Plant them now. Beautiful cut flower. Fantastic cut flower. The other one, this is a double. Look at this guy. I mean, come on. It doesn't even look like an amaryllis. Yeah, I'm planting this one for sure. I've never planted this one before. Huh. Yeah. Huh. Okay. Right. Okay. Not only, not only are we talking and I've got to find you or you've got to find me. Hello. Ah. Uh, oh, yeah. 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 Okay. Not only are we talking flowers, guys, but I'm also talking about shrubbery. Shrubbery in the garden. 
and never ever forget about this because the green shrubbery, if you simply just have color, 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 it can look like a bit of a smarty box, licorice all sorts, without the, the beautiful pink ones or the black outside that you can squish. <laughs> So you've got to have a bit of green to balance and think about this in your own garden. So other plants that I'd recommend that you use and plant to help with this are the following. Beautiful Ruscus. Now Ruscus, you know if you buy a bunch of Ruscus at your local florist, it costs you an arm and a leg. I mean, I'm probably exaggerating, but it's probably like three, four rand a stem, a stem of this. Why? Because Ruscus can last up to 12 weeks in the vase. 12 weeks. Grows in the shade. Spectacular. This over here. Now this we love in the garden. Um, this is a penicetum and it's called cabaret. Penicetum cabaret. Now I want to take this penicetum, if I can get it out here, and show you. This penicetum, it's, it's a grass. Do you see that? It's a beautiful beautiful colorful grass but very very soft and flowy in the garden it is spectacular but when we're going to use it in the vase and think about this when we are then translating this to the garden look what happens look what happens all of a sudden all of a sudden there's softness there's a bit of flow there's a bit of movement you're getting different textures, you're getting the narrow leaf with the clusters against these small little clusters. If it was in a bigger garden, we've got that in the background, we've got that, and then we've got the status. Can you see the movement and textures and exactly what you're doing in your garden? You would then take those plants, exactly what we're doing here, the same thing. So it's vice versa. I hope that makes sense. Another great plant as a good structural plant for the garden is the Indian hawthorn called Raphiolepis delicuria. Um, part of the member of the rose family. It's got this thick, thick leaf, really robust shrub. Flowers now in spring. You also get a dwarf variety, very cold tolerant um, and can also grow right down at the sea. Uh, but this is a great foliage plant and people the, like the, the high end, like the award winning floral artists, love using this, love it, because it lasts and it's also quite bendable. Mm, okay, not that I'm going to be bending anything right here today. Okay, other plants that I want you to consider are this, is this. Now look at this here. This is, you know this plant. Come on guys, you know it. Yeah, it's the marble chip. Yes! Remember we had those big plants in the garden, the green and white, they would take up about four square meters per plant. When you did take it out, there would be a crater there that looked like there was um, something had fallen out the sky. Well, now there's some beautiful hybrids around and this one in particular is called Sunset. Um, it's a small shrub, awesome foliage. And this foliage, of course, combines beautifully when you're using it against greys. Okay. Look, look against the grey. Now, not only to combine in the vase, but also in the garden. A caprosma next to this Westringia. What a combo, like flawless, faultless. It works fantastically. So there are many, many options, guys. We have, we've raced through a couple here. We really have raced through. Um, I, oh, oh, I nearly forgot. Goodness gracious caramba. Probably the most ultimate in terms of picking for explosions and wildness and, and not only that but for beauty in the garden has to be the most amazing artichoke. Now in the garden at the moment this beauty is a meter. He's that wide. He's got big grey these architectural leaves that ooze out and remember grey in the garden, how important it is. We just touched on it there. But above all, when they flower, this is artichoke violet de Provence. Very important that you remember that de Provence. You'll find these in the herb section of your local garden centre. 
and plant it in your flower beds. That's what I say to people. Flowers, herbs, vegetables, they're all flowers. You know, move your cheese. Come on. I know you can. Um, change the goalposts. We plant these in the flower beds and this is Violet de Provence. We don't grow it to, for artichokes. No, no, I tried that once. Oh, no, no, negative, no. Um, we, we grow it for the flowers. And when this guy opens, it is this mass of, of blue. It, it's insane. The flowers' heads are about that big. And you simply can't, you can't beat that spectacle of nature. Um, yeah, completely insane. Of course, foxgloves, foxies, which if you planted them when I told you to, which was around about April, May, they'll be looking like this now in your garden. Okay, and you can pick them. Ah, yes, you could. Dianthus, beautiful dianthus. This is called dash. Dianthus dash, great for middle borders. There are so many plants, and I know I'm rattling off a lot of names, guys, but if you're a little bit stressed and you can't remember them, it's okay, because in the latest issue, which you are gonna buy because you want to enter the competition, there are 12, 13, 14 different filler plants that we have recommended to you for spring that are going to go right through into October, November, December, right into the summer months. Okay, so let's get on to something else. Um, Tanya, can I have cut flowers with seeds? Can I sow them and be successful? Will it be like, no, no, like disaster waiting? Absolutely not. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. And it's very simple, guys. And we've been over this time and time again on seed sowing. And if you are a bit rusty on it and you need a quick catch up, like a quick little motivational course on how to get it right, please go to Garden Tube and look at seed sowing because we give it to you there step by step with all the right stuff so you don't make a mistake. Because if these packets do not bring you success, I will eat my hat. Hat, hat. Okay, actually cap, because um, I don't wear a hat. Uh, but what can you sow now that is going to give you that summer pleasure, which is going to be for cut flowers? Summer would not be summer without cosmos. It would not be summer. And we know that when the cosmos are in full flower, that is when autumn is nearing. So you've got to sow them now. Sow them now. And you can direct sow. You literally, you get your fork, and you just scuffle a little bit over there in amongst the flower beds, throw a bit of compost, mix your seeds with some palm peat, hoy them, okay, and water, and they will germinate. And in between these shrubs that you have got, your established plants, you're going to have these little pops of pink and white pushing through. That is what we want. Other things to use now. Also, that you can then transfer into the vase, which we have all the time in the garden, are Californian poppies. Tough, hardy, incredibly indestructible. And in fact, we've got a whole lot of volunteers that just popped up down near the gravel garden at the swimming pool. We had some in the top bed last year. Those clearly just moved down, and I haven't had the heart to take them out. And they are growing, they've just germinated all in the gravel and there are these pops of orange it's too delightful which shows you i didn't even sow them i didn't god did and they are all over the garden so is it difficult to sow seeds negative negative okay just get the head right and then the rest will follow beautiful helichrysum now i want to show you the helichrysum because this is what they are they also those paper flowers You pick these and they will last forever and ever and ever. We've got a bunch in the garage at the back there that is probably five years old. In fact, it is, isn't it? They're five years old. I picked them in the felt. Yeah, okay, it was, it was a cow field. Okay, I didn't like to steal them out like the nature. It was a cow field and these helichrysums were flowering and I picked them and they are now five years old, that bunch, because they dry beautifully. But you can sow them by seed. Okay, so sow them by seed. 
The only thing I'm going to caution you with helichrysum is do not overwater. Because it's the same family as the status. Remember the same, the same flower? Papery. Papery. Same family. Not a lot of water. Get that right and these will grow beautifully for you. Other scatterings of beautiful, beautiful colours can also get used and we call these, I call these quick fixes, like quick fixes. Um, if you've got a patch, you want to sew something, you're not very fussy about it, then get some of the colourful mixes. And of course, I alluded to it just now, aha, uh -huh, and look, 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 uh, what garden, what, what garden should, no garden should be without these. <laughs> and they're the beautiful sunflowers. But I spoke to you a bit earlier about herbs and veg and veg and herbs and why should they be in like relinquished, banished to the, the herb garden or the veggie garden. Come on guys, it's time to change things up. This is a little basil. Um, in fact, it's one of these. It's the little red basil, okay, which we planted in the front flower bed. It's in front of these beautiful delphiniums, the white delphiniums that are flowering at the moment. So it's a herb but it's in the front garden. Hmm, is it wrong, is it right? No, it's just a bit different. And the bees love it. And when you rub against the foliage, it's that licorice all sorts. It's wonderful. Um, and of course you can pick these and they last forever. Um, and you put them on the kitchen counter, especially coming into summer with flies, put them on the kitchen counter and when you walk past, you just give it a dricky. Okay, we lo I love having these. We always have some basil on the kitchen counter in the summer months because when you walk past, you just bruise it. I, I call it, a, it's a drive-by dricky. So you give it just a little squeeze and what happens is as you're squeezing it, the oils are released, which is the scent of the licorice and guess what? Flies don't like it. Flies hate it. Yes, so adorn yourself with basil and you'll be okay. When you're having a bra, you pick this basil. When you're having a bra, you pick this basil and you rub it on the countertops, okay? Rub it on the countertops, ha, okay? Rub it on the bra grid, have it near your meat because the flowers, they ain't got a chance against this stuff, okay? Flowers, veggies, veggies, flowers, flowers, veggies are flowers too. Come look here. And, and this is what, where we love to play and this is where I encourage you to play. To let a mustard, mustard seed that you sowed, you sowed, pack it a mustard. Let some of it go to flower. Let some of it shoot and bolt. Because these are spectacular. Those are the flowers. And you'll get similar looking flowers if you let lettuce bolt. If you let your spinach, any of the greens, if you allow them to flower, this is what you're going to get and there it is there's the mustard mm. edible bees love it it adds color gives you heart and it's fast and it's quick okay and then of course the one that we all know that we all should have our in our gardens is rocket Sow it by seed. You can see we sow in intervals because there's a wee bit of seed left in here. We never sow the whole packet all at once. Because then we're going to have rocket coming out of our ears. Literally, a rocket out of our ears. <laughs> oh, Tanya. Okay, stay focused. Um, rocket is, is fantastic. Uh, I mean, we all use it. Coming up to summer, rocket, sliced tomato, buffalo mozzarella. What more could you want? But look at the flowers. The flowers are edible. Sow it, sow it, and make sure that the soil around it just has been turned lightly so that when it seeds, because here are all the seeds, look at it. This is full, just waiting to mature. These seeds will then pop and then more will be able to come up. But it all starts just with one packet. So guys, those are flowers, herbs, that deserve to be in the flower beds because all of these have great, great potential to use in vases, but with not only that, but multiple. Edible, fragrant, aromatic, and of course, all the health possibilities that come with it. Now, 
things can go wrong. Of course they can go wrong, guys. Of course. You know, summer is out, uh, spring is here, and there are going to be a few hohos along the way. Um, but we like to keep it simple. We like to keep it natural. Um, so remember, if you do have hohos around, they're going to be two ways, two or three ways. And I'm going to talk to you about these two. Number one, this is called no more insects. It's a what we call RTU, which means it's ready to use. No mixing. No having to work out one mil into one liter, therefore, uh, or the famous one is 12.5 mils and 10 liters. Okay, I've only got a one liter spray bottle. That means it's, mm, help me, 6.5, 6.75 into five liters. Okay, then after that I'm lost. And then I know what you do. You just take the cap and you just put some in and you just hoi it. And you say, and one for the road. Okay, that is not how you do it. Instructions are there for a very good reason to keep you safe and the flowers and of course all the wildlife. Um, the ready to use work and especially if you've got a smallish garden, guys, I would encourage you to get that. And you know what it is when you see something and you're in a hurry and you need to go here and you need to go there and you think, oh, I've got to get it, I've got to mix it, I've got to hang it, hang it. Yeah, by the time that's, you're over it. You're over it. Okay, you're now 10 minutes late from where you were meant to be. So we have these around the garden and they work. They really do work. They can be used on edible crops as well. There is a waiting period of up to seven days for some of your edible crops. Very importantly um, is to read all the instructions, of course, before you get to use any of these. Uh, one of our favorites is this. It's called Organicide Plus. And you know, much like with all of the EcoBuzz products, guys, we want to make sure that we are going the most responsible way. Okay. Organicide Plus is basically made up of canola oil. You know, the oil that you fry your eggs in. Yeah. Canola oil, garlic. How will you know it's garlic? Trust me, when you open the bottle, you'll know it's garlic. A garlic extract, and it's got pyrethrum, and pyrethrum is extracted from the chrysanthemum plant. Yes. And plus it's got another product in it which is called a synergist and a synergist is basically an organic compound so what does it do well basically it smothers you spray it on it smothers the insects thrips um, uh, aphids mealybug uh, there's a long list of products that it will do it has no harmful effect on on, on um, earthworms on bees the only thing I'm going to say to you with the organicide is two areas of caution number one Spray early in the morning because it's an oil. Imagine it's 28 degrees. You're spraying an oil. Remember those days when you used to lather cooking oil on you, you know, to get nice and brown? Nah, same thing. That's what you're going to do to your flowers. So you never spray in the heat of the day. Early morning, late afternoon. Also, if, you're, if your plants or your shrubs are in flower and you're treating a mealy bug on the leaf or something, avoid the flower because the garlic sometimes... Um, discourages the bees to go along okay, because it smells. I mean, it's like, I'm not going there, you know. Um, and how am I going to hook up later? So um, those are the two most important things, early in the morning or late afternoon. Um, very importantly, with all of these, that they are, this, this is a great organic product. And with the rain that's coming for summer, and yes, it is going to come, guys, there are always things. And listen, if you've got delphiniums, if you've got soft, fleshy, um, any seedlings that have just emerged, especially if you've sown veggie seeds, herb seeds, flower seeds, young, delicious, mmm, <gasps> yummy, the snails will love it, guys. So please make sure you put down the snail bait. Now, I know there's a lot of hoo-ha about snail baits. So listen up carefully before you want to smack me over the head. Um, this snail bait here literally is a brand that's in, been um, infused with iron. Iron, a naturally, finding, a naturally found component in the soil. Iron, F-E, as in the periodic table. You put this down around your young seedlings, your herbs, whatever you've just sown, whatever you've just planted, put it around, especially if you know we have had some rain because that's when they are active. So what happens is the slugs come along, they're attracted to the yeast, to the, the bran, 
okay? They're attracted to that because it's a source of food. They eat that. What happens is the iron starts interfering with the calcium metabolic process in the lining of their gut. They stop eating immediately. Immediately. But they obviously don't die immediately because it is not a poison. Okay? So they die anorexic three to six days later, which is also fine, in my opinion. Um, either that or squash them. But the point is here, folks, is that if you put this down and you go out the next day and you still see snails walking around, you're going to say it doesn't work. It takes three to six days. The other most important thing is that if your dog eats it, if you eat it, if your baby eats it, shame if the ex-husband comes visiting and eats it. You, you know, you are not going to die. Nothing is going to happen. The earthworms are not going to hurt. The good bacteria in the soil is not going to get hurt. Nothing. So this is a good alternative. Guys, please, I want you to be eyes wide open and awake on these things. Of course, on the range of EcoBuzz, there are many amazing inoculants which you can use for whitefly, thrips, powdery mildew, downy mildew as well. And lastly, 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 of course, all of these plants that you're going to be planting need to get fed. Feed them and watch them grow. So if you are planting, if you've got seedlings in, um, if you've got some young seedlings that you've just planted, if you've sown your cosmos and it's starting to push through, you want to feed them. Get one of these, either the 316 or the Nutri-Feed, guys. It goes a long way. It's a cap into five liters of water. You can either put it on dry or as a liquid, but just feed them, please. Um, I see so many plants that are just so hungry and they like, like if they could take themselves off to the local kiosk and get a loaf of bread with peanut butter, they would. Okay, they're needing some carbs. They're needing some food. So get a fertilizer and just use it. And don't ask me how often, because believe it or not, on the back of the packet, it tells you everything. Okay, so just use it, please. Guys, last thing I want to tell you about is that on the home channel, which is still the, this is the first episode, which is still airing this week, there's an amazing competition every week, every week. One of you, by just SMSing, stands a chance to win an amazing steel product. 13 weeks, 13 different products. Oh, oh, oh yes. So if it's that chainsaw you're after, if it's that little if it's a blower that you're after, if it's a little trimmer, make sure that you watch The Gardener. If not to see and learn a bit about your garden, but you can win some cool products too. Uh, guys, please remember to go out to your local garden centre, your local builders, your checkers, your Woolworths, your spa, and pick up the latest copy of The Garden and Detainee. Everything you need to know about gardening is right here at your fingertips. There's a bit of me in both of these, in all of these, from what to plant now, from what to prune, how to fix your lawn if you didn't get those pages, um, those tips that I gave you. There's a whole lot in these magazines as well. And of course, then there's Grow to Eat. Guys, Grow to Eat, 10 ways with strawberries, sorghum, how to grow your own coffee, garlic, um, how to grow sorghum. I said that already, didn't I? Yes, I did. And of course, we meet up with Justin Bonello, um, who's become, here yeah, quite an amazing friend. What to do with nasturtiums, it's all in here. And of course, this covers for three months. So it's August, September and October, plus the Moon Guide for each month. Guys, Please remember that I will answer all your questions a little bit later. I know we didn't have a chance to get to the queue, but I promise you that we will get to them. This has been a monster of a live. There's lots of info, so you may be going to have to stop, rewind, check out some plant names. If you've forgotten them, just ask us and we will help you. But I encourage you, I encourage you to bridge the divide between the flowers that we normally buy to put in our home to growing them yourself. Take the leap of faith. What's the worst thing that can happen? <laughs> Most importantly, you'll get some good endorphins going. You're going to improve your garden and you're growing your investment. Plus, it's a feeling of happiness. It's happiness. 
Happiness is probably the most beautiful feeling that all of us want in the world. It's the thing that we strive for. And you can have that by simply just planting a plant. Our grateful thanks go out to Macro Home and Garden and to Stark Airs for their contribution today. Um, and as thank you to my amazing team um, that's behind the scenes here that keep me in check and keep me on the straight road. Um, I love you all. Uh, thank you all so, so much. God bless you all. And till next time, happy gardening. The Gardener Masterclass was proudly brought to you by Macro Home and Garden. Visit macro.co.za to find out more about our range to solve most common gardening problems. macro.co.za And Stark Airs, the leading seed supplier in South Africa. Are you ready to grow? Stark Airs, seeds of success. Calling all green-fingered gurus and plant killers alike. We got you covered every month with gardening inspiration, hands-on practical advice and fun projects to do. From the latest in plant fashion, growing your own, whether to prune or not to prune, from cover to cover, The Gardener and Detainee magazines have got your back. Get your copy now or subscribe online at thegardener.co.za.